Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to today's episode of Sophia's Ascent. I'm so excited about today's show because I'm going to be talking to something that happens to everybody except some few of us that have mastered life and know how to handle things. Now, let me tell you a story. When I was growing up, I was writing... Ah, I have stories to tell, man. Where do I start from? I was in school, I was in university, I was going to, I was in my second year going to the third year and suddenly they realized my name was not on the university list. This can only happen in Nigeria, by the way, sorry. It was crazy because I didn't even do so well. There were so many issues, man, in that school. And guess what? I had to write, in Nigeria, there's this um, exam you write, jump. I had to go back home. Um, I was living with my sister, Pastor Eve, and I had to go back home. I had to write jam again. And before, before I wrote the jam, I had to go for, you know the extra classes that you go for to um, get your papers right? Imagine somebody that was in the third year university going back to jam lesson. <laughs> I did it. I had to go back to jam lesson to write my exam. And I now passed. In fact, I didn't even know whether I would pass again because at this point, when I found out my name was not in school, my name was not in, in the university and I had to go, I was not a student, I had to go back and write the exam again. I was so depressed and sad. I remember I wrote a letter to my brother-in-law and I said, my future is so bleak, I can't even see it. I'm finished, like I'm done. <laughs> And he told me, and he said, don't say that, don't talk, don't say these words. I was looking at him like, who am I, what am I? I mean, at that time, this was me, my, just living in my teens. Everybody in their teens or in their early 20s, it's all about school, graduating school. Like, here am I, I don't have any school, I don't have any degree, nothing to show. And I was just in school for like three years, I had to start all over again. It was so, such a big deal. But guess what, my people? I found the courage. My sister, my brother-in-law, they pushed me. Found the courage. I went back to jam lesson. I was, you know, when you meet small, small children, like you meet your younger ones in the jam lesson. I, I stayed with them. I was there. I had to write that exam again. And guess what? I passed and I entered another university. Now, all those times I was so depressed and sad and not knew my future was became like history. I started all over again. Even though when I was starting 100 level in the other university, most of my mates, most of my peers had graduated. And um, it was saddening and depressing for a while. But with the right thoughts, I was able to get back on my feet and finish school and get to work and do so many other things in my life. And life just moved on after that. Why am I saying this? Um, I've had several experiences in my life where I've had to ask myself questions that, oh my God, what am I? Oh, it's finished, no more. I mean, there was one time, 2016, I was so sick. I thought I was going to, in fact, I died. <laughs> it was crazy, it was a crazy experience. If you've been, if you're you uh, acquainted with my page, you, you will see that testimony when I've talked about it. I've had such experiences, several, where I was really depressed. So I know what depression is. I know what failure is. I've been there. And I'm not like people that will say, oh, I've had, I always know what to do. I've, there were times I didn't know what to do. And if you're watching this show right now and you have any form of depression or sadness or hopelessness in your life, this is the show to watch because I'm talking to you. And I hope you gain one or two things. I'm going to be sharing four things that helped me um, and, and will help you to out of depression and anxiety and and hopelessness because these are things that happen to people especially when you don't meet your target or you don't meet your dreams or you have something that you want to do and you're just not getting it oh how frustrating it is and it's sometimes you can really get hopeless when you can't even see the light in a tunnel it can really get frustrating now this is for you now the first thing um there's a script i'm going to be sharing scriptures today <laughs> the first thing that got me was I received information I had to tell myself I had to I had to receive information that there is hope there is hope for every situation you are going through whether you were abused whether 
um, you're looking for money. Now, depression and failures come in different ways. It might be that lack of something you want, um, um, no money, no job, just name it. Whatever it is can be the reason why you're not happy or you're feeling sad. But just guess, just think about this, that there is hope for you. Can you know that now? Can you say it? Say there is hope. And this situation is going to turn around for my good. You better know it. You better think it. You better see it. There is hope. I'm going to share a scripture for you that says um, Proverbs 23, 18. Okay? Proverbs 23, 18. Let me start from 17. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all day long. For surely there's an end, and thine expectation will not be cut off. Surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Now, comparison also leads to depression. Comparison leads to um, hopelessness. When you see the person that they call your mate, you know this thing that they call mate, it has led people to death, untimely death. Somebody will say, see your mate, your mate, who is your mate? You have no business comparing yourself with anybody else, but you have your own life. Find that. That's why I said the first episode, I told you, I said, write down who you are, who you are, who are you, who, what are you here to do? Can you find that out first? The only condition you have is yourself, your dreams, your values, and the things you want to do, your impact you want to make in the world. That's the only competition you have. Now, well, after you've done that, you must know that there is hope in every situation. There is a way out. Even in death, there is a way out. Even when death comes, there is a way out. Nothing is hopeless. We have the name of Jesus to help us out of anything. The Bible says the name is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. There is hope for you, my brother. There is hope for you, my sister. Um, like I said, no matter the situation. You might say, Sophia, um, I'm, I'm even in a case that I can't even tell anybody. It's so, it's so shameful. No matter the shame, there is hope for you. And you can decide to come out of that situation today. It's all in your heart, it's all in your mind, and it's all in your spirit. All right. So that's number one, there is hope. Number two, there is solution. And there is um, a way out. That solution is in you. Let me read a scripture that says, uh, a scripture for you, Proverbs 24, 14. Okay. So now I'll say, Number two is that there is a solution for that situation. After you have said, oh, there is hope. Okay, so how do I leave this place? How do I leave this situation? How do I change this circumstance? How do I, what do I do? Guess what? There is a solution. There is a way out. It's inside you. It's in the word. It's, you have to sit, you have to get to a place where you sit down. I have to get to a place where I ask myself, okay, now that I'm in my early 20s, my mates have graduated, what am I going to do? I need, I need, I want to go to school. I want to be, because my dad, my mom, everybody in my house went to school. I didn't want to be the one that couldn't go to school. Not that it would define my future, but it's something that I really wanted. So, what is the way? Even though it looked like a long journey back, I had to take out time and go back to the jam lesson, to the extra classes, and wrote the exam again, studied for it, and then I passed. I didn't think of, uh, yeah, there were times when I was like, oh my God, what am I doing here? My mates, <laughs> this mates thing, my mates are graduates. No, the solution was that I had to go back and learn and get back on track. And that's what I did. So you looking at me now, what's that thing you need to do? Do you need to start writing? Do you need to start working hard? Do you need to start working in a restaurant? Maybe, maybe you need a job. Maybe you're looking for money and you're like, how am I going to get money? You have asked everybody in this world and nobody has answered you. Brother, sister, maybe you need to get a job. You can't even work in a restaurant. You can work as a receptionist, no matter how small. But that job will get you something, to get you value for something. It's a solution to a problem. What's that solution? What is that solution? What is that solution? It's called wisdom. And the truth is, if you watch Sophia's essence long enough, you know that the wisdom that can stand all the test of time is the wisdom of God and the wisdom that is found in His Word. And His Word is saying to us today, So shall the knowledge of wisdom, Proverbs 24, 14, So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. When thou hast found it, there shall be a reward, and thy expectation shall not be cut off. Praise God. 
Now for number three. What's that thing you need to be aware of? Prayer. Hmm. Hmm. Prayer is so important. Philippians 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again, and again I say rejoice. Let moderation be known unto men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Now verse 7 says, And the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Now Philippians is a very powerful um, book for me. And I always tell people, when you people don't know the power in prayer, prayer is not just time to ask God for things. Prayer is a place where you find solution. In praying to God, God reveals to you things that you will normally not see, that were right in your front, in, in front of your eyes. In prayer, you are able to express yourself to God and guess what? He hears you. God loves us so much with an everlasting love. He, he, he wants us happy. So every time we separate ourselves to talk to Him, He will talk back to you. Have you prayed about that situation? Have you prayed to God? Have you actually prayed? And when you prayed, when He told you stuff or when He, he, he revealed stuff to you, do you even trust Him? The Bible says that they that put their trust in God shall never be put to shame. Trust Him today with your dreams. Trust Him today with your vision. Trust Him today with your heart. He will not let you down like every other man did. You want to get married, you want to have children, whatever it is, pray about it. It will happen. The last but not the least, and just the way the Bible tells us to pray without season. This one is very instructive too. Philippians 4 8. He says, Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise. Think on this thing. Think, think. You have to change your thoughts. You have to change your thoughts. I remember when I was really sick in the hospital. I remember I was okay just dying. And I was telling myself, oh, let me just fly away. But the moment I changed my thoughts and I said, no, I'm going to take care of my husband. I'm going to take care of my daughter. I started getting better. You need to change your thoughts. These are the things you should be thinking about. If you are wondering what to think about, even in a situation where that is crazy, a situation that is bad, you are wondering, what should I be thinking about? Let me tell you, the things that are true, the things that are honest, things that are just, things that are pure, things that are lovely, things that are good reports. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. These are the things you should think about. So. If anything you're thinking about, if it is not pure, if it is not lovely, if it is not of good report, if, there, if there's no praise in it, stop. And let me, let's, let's do so. I, I was listening on Crepe Dollar's message one time and he was talking and he said, let's say you're thinking something in your mind now. You're thinking, hey, I'm so fat. I'm not fine. I'm this. I'm yep. Just go ahead and think. You watch me now. Think. Stop. Stop thinking, say Sophia. <laughs> Guess what? Your thinking has stopped. Just by saying something, say your name or say anything, your thinking has stopped. So when those thoughts come to your mind, the thoughts come because demons and devils, they're all around. Just the way angels are all around, just the way the Spirit of God is around, bringing thoughts of peace. The devil is around bringing thoughts of evil, thoughts of depression, thoughts that make you look as if you're not good, thoughts that make you look as if you're in a hole when actually you have the break of dawn. Once those thoughts come, stop thinking about them. Open your mouth and declare who you are. Say, I'm an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror. I am very fine. I'm rich. I'm beautiful. I'm powerful. I'm excellent. I'm influential. Oh my goodness, look at me. You want children? I have so many children. Twins, triplets. I'm a mother of the nations. Find the courage to laugh. Find the courage to do something great. Find the courage to think these things. Now, the last test, but not the least test. <laughs> do something good for somebody else. It's not all about you. There's one thing you learn on Sophia's essence. Always is about doing something good. So, if you're depressed, 
you are thinking how something is not working for you and now the most unlikely thing that you will do is to do something good for somebody else but that is what you should do that's what you should do look for someone pray for the person pray with the person look for how you can help somebody and before you know it the attention will leave those things that were troubling you and you, you get into you become an impact you become you become a person of influence you become a person of you you become an overcomer because now you have not allowed the situation that is troubling you to hold you down you become a victor over your circumstances that's what you should do so don't allow anything or anyone depress you don't allow anything take away your joy because your joy is your strength the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength so when that joy is taken away you are weak and you don't want that be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might think on the things pray remember there is hope for you and there is a solution inside you find out and everything will be okay so to everyone going through something out there I encourage you today you are special and you're special to God God is not gone he's right there with you he's in that trial with you talk to him he will tell you what to do and how to do it and in the end you might come on this show me and you will talk about the testimony okay so everyone I'm going now the next episode will be so interesting because it'll not be just me on my chair talking to you. So please tell everybody to go on my YouTube page. So if you are that, subscribe, like, comment, share, and tell me something. I want to talk to you guys. Connect with me. Connect with me on my Instagram, Facebook. Um, talk to me. Let's let's share things that are in your mind. Okay. Love you. Bye.